I know you don't like to get drawn into politics, uh, Sadhguru, but something which has hit very close home is uh, recently there was a man who was injured in an explosion that took place in Mengaluru. Now, it turns out that this man, Sharik, on his WhatsApp status, had a statue of Adiyo. How do you read the fact that here's the man who was inspired by ISIS literature? He had a caught with a in an explosion and he had a picture of Adi Yogi. I think I should be glad that even he is carrying Adi Yogi <laughs> That's how I would like to see it, but that, that's not the reality I know. One thing is, uh, he is to mask his identity, that is a clever thing to do, uh, the work that he is doing. But uh, the important thing is that we need to understand any image of this kind. You know what happened in Afghanistan to the Buddha statues. Uh, this has happened across northern plains that anything that was considered idolatry was destroyed because somebody firmly believed that. So now I think most people have settled, okay, you do your thing, I do my thing, it's okay, I think we should bring that. So there are still some radical elements going on like this. For them, the most terrible thing is that there is Adiyogi statue standing there which uh, which hurts in some way because they think we are worshipping. We are not worshipping, we are using it as an inspiration to go in a certain direction. But still, that is the belief. So this education needs to happen to all communities that how you want to reach something beyond yourself. See, essentially, let's see it this way, whatever your religion is. I'm somebody who's never read any scripture of any culture. I've stayed away from that. Whatever it may be, essentially I believe all religions were created to help a human being in some way to transcend their limitations and find higher qualities within themselves. Somebody will do it by prayer, somebody will do it by ritual, somebody will do it uh, by all kinds of worship, somebody will do it by meditation, somebody will do it by knowledge, it doesn't matter how. Essentially in yoga we say there are only four ways. You can use your body and do it, we call this uh, karma yoga. You can do your intelligence and do it, we call this jnana yoga. You can use your emotion and do it, we call this bhakti yoga. You can use your life energies and do it, this is called as kriya yoga. So whatever religion you may come from, in some way it is a combination of these four things. In what proportion it may vary, but that's all a human being can do. You can use your body, mind, emotion and energy, there's nothing else for you to use. You can invent whatever you want. So. This maturity needs to come, I think it's beginning to happen in the world, across the world. We're reaching billions of people every year. In spite of that, uh, what I see is there is small fringes, margin... Uh, margins of people who still firmly believe whatever uh, is being told to them. So I think this needs to change. It is uh, not anybody's business how an individual person is pursuing his own well-being. So about uh, Adi Yogi becomes so popular that even uh, a terror suspect carries Adi Yogi, I think it may be. <laughs> Uh, that is always new for us. I don't know, I have not counted and on average in a year how many death threats come to me, they keep coming. Uh, I'm alive, so it's okay. <laughs> what... is it a cause of worry that in the place that you live and in other pockets, in Karnataka, for example, this, this gentleman was in Mang Mangalore, he travelled to Tamil Nadu, he travelled to Co Coimbatore, he travelled to Kerala, <laughs> that there is growing radicalization in a sect or in a group of people? No, you, I did. I was in Mysore, constantly traveled to Mangalore, then Mysore to Coimbatore <laughs> this guy is traveling the same route. <laughs> I know I'm joking about a serious subject, but it's very important that we learn to handle the most significant aspects of our lives, we learn to carry it lightly. Otherwise, we will want to kill each other. Let's not go there.